incredible story. They're, um, they're Germans, and they left Germany 32 years ago, and they're kind of beatnik hip, you know, they're kind of like us, you know, they're kind of, but they were, you know, kind of against the whole Europeans. They didn't like Germany terribly, and they went to see, being sea gypsies. Um, when they went to sea, um, they, you know, uh, were very successful, and they had gone through the Red Sea numerous times. They were off Yemen, and they see these two fishing boats. And the two fishing boats are there, and they're making lunch, and Sabina, the, the names here are Jurgen um, and Sabina, and the name of the boat is Rockall. And all of a sudden, the two fishing boats, you know, she's like at the galley, and he's like at the thing, and he, he hears them speed up. Show him the picture. Um, and um, then the two fishing boats come and, you know, pile onto him with like one minute there's nobody on his boat, the next minute there's like 14 Somalis with AK-47s. There was no time to even call. Yeah. So, um, but he's right off the coast of Yemen, and, you know, Somalia's quite a bit. So he thinks the, the NATO forces will spot him immediately, because now he has um, pirate boats off of his transom and a mother pirate boat hanging. That's pretty close by. Um, this is him and me. Show um, it to the camera? Yeah. Just next. Let me get a picture of the boat in the next we can, Yeah, we'll get a good B-roll yeah. later. Okay. And um, so, um, so um, he, they're proceeding to there, and they ask him to start your engine. Well, he's a very clever mechanic. And so when he goes, he says, well, I can't start my engine, and he shows him why. And when he shows him why, you know, he just kind of takes a solenoid, you know, to his electric starter, you know, his fuel pump, and shuts it off so they, you know, so that nobody can start it until he... So, so they decide to tow him to Somalia, where he thinks that's going to take forever. Um, but they're towing him. Now, when they're towing him, they're cooking food, but they're scared to use the stove. So they're cooking, they just come down and take pieces of the interior. And so this gets oh, Jurgen so... Friggin' mad. And they're he just lighting fires, bucket. basically. The, they're lighting the fires deck. outside. Yeah. On deck, yeah. And Where's they're catching the fish boat? and lighting fires on deck. Luckily, it's a steel boat. And he's yelling, you know, look at, we'll cook the food. You know, here's the program. You know, here's, you know, I'll. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah what are you that. doing? You know, and they're taking up the floorboards and they're falling into the bilge. And this is his pride and joy, Rock Hall. And uh, so, man, so when they come up to Somalia. It's such a very long story. <laughs> we could stop it if you want. But when we come up to Somalia, they're. Um, 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 Jurgen goes down below at his chart table and shows them the chart and when he's doing that he reaches down and takes his handheld GPS and he puts it in his shorts and he tapes oh. it, he takes some duct tape and he tapes the GPS around his thigh so he has a GPS right he um, when they go to the shore there's these uh, all these people and now he realizes something's going on and his people are really nervous and he thinks they're nervous because he thinks they're going to their pirate chief as it turns out, when they get to the beach, there's these roving bands of uh, pirate marauders who feed on the other pirates. They wanted to steal them. <laughs> so this group is trying to steal Jurgen and Sabina. And their only instructions, that group, is to not kill the white people. <laughs> the white people. And their pirates, their only instructions are don't kill them either. So, but they start sh killing each other. So they got these like pickup trucks with machine guns. Everybody's shooting. They're down in the mud. It's Holy just absolutely shit. bedlam as they're killing each other. And there's people tapping them and trying to drag them. And you know, and finally one of their pirates, because they now they sail with these guys for like five days, taps them and they run off into some undergrowth. And they go up and they're on the mountain. They can see the skirmishes. They're still killing each other. And they can see Rockall. And the people that have left on Rockall, they can see the smoke rising because they're taking his goddamn interior and burning it. <laughs> They're still fishing. Right? So he, they, they have to move all the time so the other pirates can't find them, the people who want to kidnap them, right? So they're doing this and hiding, you know, and sleeping in the rough and whatnot. So um, finally they uh, feel they're secure enough that they don't have to keep moving. And at one point they give uh, Jurgen a cell phone, right? And Jurgen um, say plead for your life. say plead for your life. And Jurgen hears it, and it's the German embassy, or it's somebody in Germany, you know, from the government. So um, Jurgen starts talking to him in German, and, um, in German, and um, realizes he doesn't think that anybody understands German. So he says to, into his thing, you know, there's one thing about a black man, you know, he's got a tiny little penis. These guys got the smallest. Little penis. <laughs> and he's saying that. Yeah, and he's trying to, you know, in German, yeah. you know, oh, to see if he, and, get a yeah, he can't get any rise out of them. So he realizes that they don't understand German. So he says, look at I have a GPS. You know, I have the exact coordinates of this. There's a flat piece of thing. You can land the things there. You know, this is pretty simple. Um, you, know, uh, you know, I'm white. 
they're black. Uh, you can say, you know, in Germany, down, you know, we'll get on the ground, they won't. You know, I mean, this is, you know, just come and get us. And they're like, well, no, that's an international incident, we can't do that. Now, Sabina is suffering horribly, right? Um, and this is dragging on forever and ever. And he keeps talking more and more on to these people. And the Germans are saying, we can't officially get you out, but, you know, there's a ransom. At some point, they, they knocked out all his teeth. Right? They knocked out all his teeth when he was trying to defend um, Sabina. Sabina. Why is she suffering, though? Uh, well, raped her several times uh, every day. <laughs> so, um, so he can't, you know, he's, he wants, so he calls him on the, on the phone and says, you know, just bomb us. Just kill us, you know, drop, take out the goddamn mountain, I don't care, you know, just kill us, you know, this is, kill us. And uh, they're like, well, gee, you know, we're really not authorized to kill you. Um, so while he's doing this, he realizes, he starts flipping through the contacts of the phones, right? And he's going through their, their, whatever you call it, speed dial. So he memorizes the speed dial of oh, all these different pirates. All the phone numbers. Oh, oh, oh. And each time he's off the phone, he then runs and, you know, goes to a piece of bark and writes down the number, and then he and Sabina chat, you know, chant them. So he's memorizing all these, um, these phone numbers, right? And now the pirates that have got him are all in their teenagers, um, and um, the oldest ones are like 21, and they want to kill Sabina and Jurgen because they've been there a month, you know, and this is, you know, they wanted to be pirates and not to make any money. So when the 21-year-old would come up to bring them cat and, you know, drugs and food, they would say, you know, we want to kill them. And they'd have these big discussions. And the older guy would say, oh, don't kill them yet, you know, and stuff. And so, you know, uh, Jurgen would come into these things. Now, there was numerous times when Jurgen could have picked up a gun and killed everyone except the people who were with Sabina. They never, they always had people that could kill Sabina, so he couldn't kill them. Um... So, and he's negotiating for his life with the Germans. Um, and this is going on and on and getting worse and worse. And he's, remember, you know, and months and months go on and they've knocked out all of his teeth and Sabina is just crying continuously. Um, and um, uh, he's talking to the embassy and uh, et cetera. And then all of a sudden he smells, he's sitting there just like this, and he smells like cologne. <laughs> cologne. He smells like, you know, old spice or something, you know. He's like that. And around the corner comes this uh, German guy, you know, in a beautiful thing and say, oh, Jurgen, great, how's Sabina doing? You know, we've got a Learjet for you and we're having a Chateaubriand tonight. We understand that's your favorite. And a bottle of 1942 Latash. You're, you're going to love this. Oh, and he's just like, he's like, like, like hallucinating. Yeah, exactly. He's like, what is that? And uh, the pirates are all in, you know, completely They're happy. happy as can be, you know, and they've got the word that the, the uh, we are good. two different figures, 1.6 and 600,000. We don't know which one is true. Um, and so they bring, um, you know, that's it. They take him away, and they're bringing him to the airport. And Jurgen says, what about Rockall? You know, wait a minute, hold, hold on. You know, what about my boat? And they're like, well, what about your boat? He's like, where's my boat? And they said, your boat has been sunk. You know, they, your boat sunk. You know, he's like, are you sure? You know, can I, are you sure? And he's, yeah. So he doesn't know what to do. So he takes off. He goes to the plane. According to Jurgen, he, he had this big argument in the taxi. Then he went into the plane, and he came out of the Lear, a jet. It was a little jet with a stewardess, and she's like got the Chateaubriand. She's cutting it up for him. She doesn't have any teeth left. And <laughs> you know, this was sent by the German government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, but they not officially. Yeah, not yeah, officially. Right. It's a German industrialist who, you know. Yeah. So, um, so they take. So he doesn't want to go, but they say, you know, Jurgen, and now the guy is saying, you know, God, man, you get in the friggin' plane, you know, um, you know, we really want you in the plane. So he, he gets in the plane, and they fly him to Germany, and they land him in there, and there's all the press, and there's the Merkel, Merkel the woman, um, the and they're having this big thing, and there's the, the industrialist that has paid the ransom, and they make a big speech about, you know, how Germany looks after its own, and, you know, no matter anywhere, you know, et cetera. And German, uh, Jurgen is, a, you know, a political, radical guy, you know, a sea gypsy guy, and somebody stupidly gives him the microphone. <laughs> and he says, "Well, I've been cap you know, I've been kidnapped twice. You know, I was kidnapped first by the Somalis. Now I'm kidnapped by the Germans. Um, and I want and, my boat. And I want my goddamn boat. <laughs> and you people oh, suck, right? And you know, and Merkel and you is like, pay, and you shouldn't pay, and you shouldn't pay ransom. You're just endangering every other yachtsman in the world. Oh well, God. you know, they're like grabbing the microphone, you know, trying to wrestle with them, and he's like, you know, and, you know. Anyway, so um, so he's totally persona non grata." Um, 
and he is saying, excuse me, can keeps, I borrow your phone? He keeps borrowing people's cell phones. And he dials, speed dials, uh, and calls up the pirates. Now the pirates are, you know, they're in Somaliland, they got hookers, they got cocaine, they got, you know, drones, and you know, they got Lotus Elans, you know, whatever they got with the money, you know, they're having this big thing, and they're like, who is it? You know, Jurgen, what are you doing? You know, hey man, you know. <laughs> and he's like, etc. So he where's makes, my boat? <laughs> yeah, he's like, where's my boat? And at some point, I don't know how many calls he made, but at some point, somebody said, you know, you know, Jorgen, you know, calm down. I'm looking at Rockall. She's right here. You know, she's in Berryberry. She's right off the beach. You know, your boat is here. What are you freaking out about? You know, we got all this money. You know, just chill. You know, it all worked out. You're not dead. You know, we got the money. You know. And so he's, my boat is there, right? Yeah. Okay, now, Sabina is in my opinion, never recovered from this. I don't, I don't know whether she recovered before she died, but she wasn't recovered when I knew her. Um, and um, she's shaking like a leaf, and he tells her, look at, okay, you know, here's the thing, here's the password, you know, and he gives her some sort of a password, and, you know, the mackerel fries at dawn or something. And um, he takes off, and he goes to the airport, and he flies into, he can't fly into Somalia, so where does he fly into? Uh, Ethiopia. Ethiopia. And he gets into a taxi and says, take me to Somali. And the taxi driver, you know, <laughs> are you nuts? You know, I mean, like, one, I would last two seconds, but believe you me, you would last less than two seconds, you know. And you, nobody can take you into Somaliland, you know. I mean, it's just, you, it's, you, that's, that's stupid, you know. So um, he says, well, take me to the border. And so they sit at the border in the taxi until he sees a kid go by on a bicycle and he yells, hey, kid, come on over here. How much you want for that bicycle? And he gets on the bicycle and pedals into Somaliland, right? <laughs> now, we don't understand how he did this next part because he had to hide his money. But he hired a team of technicals. You know what the technicals are? They're, they're pickup trucks with machine guns. Mm, okay. So we hired one of those to, to go. And they could bring them all the way to um, so but they couldn't bring them into what, what do they call that next spot there? Very, very they good. couldn't bring... Couldn't they bring them to very, very No, they couldn't. Yeah. Anyway, they brought them someplace. They, they couldn't bring them all the way. But they could, you know, they brought him and he had to pay him. But I don't know how he worked out the money thing. Because why didn't they just slit his throat? Anyway, maybe they were nice people. Who knows? Um, how, anyway, wait, how long was he was he captain for the first time? The captain for the first time, I think four months, maybe? So, I mean, there, there's bonds that get built, even though it's terrible people, right? You, yeah. You get yeah. some kind of... Yeah. 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 So, um, so now he's going back to get rock off. And, um, and uh, he's going there. And uh, they bring him so, to this thing. And he starts walking. In, right? in the town. Yeah, and he starts walking and he looks town, down right? into the big bay and he can see in the distance there's this boat. Smoke pouring out of it. Oh, oh, God. God. They're still burning. Oh, <laughs> and when you talk to this guy, every time he goes over there, I'm ripping my fucking interior, you know, Deacon Holly, I put that boat in my own hand. And uh, so um, he's walking down in there and uh, he's approaching a restaurant and as he's approaching the restaurant, there's a guy coming towards the restaurant, and he's wearing a, a Hawaiian shirt, you know, and it's Rocco. It's his. It's his shirt. And so uh, he's feeling, you know, pretty full of oats now, and he's, you know, hey, come here, you know. You know, they're my shirt. And the guy's like, no, 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 I bought this from the police, you know. <laughs> he's like, oh, yeah, well, yeah. And he, so they get into a fight. So he, he doesn't manage to, he manages to rip the shirt off the guy. You know, it's not much of a shirt now, but, you know. And uh, so the people in the restaurant are freaking out. You know, there's some crazy old white fellow that just <laughs> beat the hell out of one of their young men. <laughs> stole uh, his shirt. Right, and stole the shirt. And so they're calling the police. You know, it's a shirt thief. He's insane, you know. And he looks up, and there's a woman, and she's clothes pinning the fitted forecastle sheets. You know, those diagonal forecastle sheets. And he's like, God damn it. So he runs over, and she won't go. So now they're having a tug of war. You know, he, he's one of these big butted mamas, you know. And, they're tugged away when the police come and arrest Jorgen. They bring him to the jail cell. He's got, it's like an old west jail cell with, you know, bars. And there was bars on this little window. And when he hoists himself up the little window, there is Rockall sitting right off the beach. Smoke pouring. <laughs> right? So they have no idea who this guy is. They have no idea what he's doing. Right? And uh, Jorgen says to Can the I jailer, borrow your cell phone? <laughs> Can I borrow your cell phone? And he calls some people, and then pretty soon the same really smooth guy that told him it was there in Barry Barry, they were like, Jurgen, you know, what are you? Oh, Jurgen, don't tell me, you know. And they say, let me give the phone to the jailer. And Jurgen hands the phone to the jailer. 
the jailer looks, you know, he's listening on the phone, he's looking at Jurgen, looking at Jurgen with his thing, and uh, goes and gets the keys and just unlocks the door and just stay outside. <laughs> <Okay. Yeah. laughs> uh, and Jurgen uh, comes out, and when he, they see him on the beach, the guys on the boat swim away, and Jurgen swims out. He's got Rockall. And he just goes. Now, Rockall what? has been completely stripped. There's not a piece of wire in her, there's not a piece of metal in her, there's no engine in her. No sails. Um, no sails. Um, no boom. No, there was a boom. He broke the boom later. Okay. You know, so it was really um, totally almost stripped. Um, and, um, and no wood, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and no wood, of course, yeah, because they burnt up the wood. And um, so um, he brings her to this place, and uh, Stern 2 uh, tied up Stern 2, a big uh, World War II antenna, um, and uh, thinks of what to do. And every morning he hears, it's kind of like a naval base, industrial area, maybe kind of like this, you know. And um, every morning at dawn he hears the big garbage truck come in and they, you know, they have dumpsters or something. And uh, so he goes and meets the dumpster, he finds out where the dumpster guy, the truck driver, truck driver, eats his lunch. And he says, you know, how much would it cost, you know. He said, what would happen if, if, if you got a flat tire on Friday, would they come and fix the flat tire then or would they wait until Monday? The guy says, oh, they'd wait, you know, they might not do it till Wednesday. He goes, how much would it cost, you know, if, if, if you, could you have a flat tire, you know, in this particular area, you know, where there's sight lines and everything? And the guy says, well, how much would it cost, how much would that cost? And the guy's like, you know, 100 US, I don't know what he said, you know, but he said some figure and Jerkin says, okay, this Friday, let's have a flat tire on your truck. Um, so he arranges this um, and um, the guy has a flat tire, he calls it in. Monday morning, they come to get the truck, they come to, they fix the tire. They go to start the truck. If there's a problem with the truck, they go to check the battery. No diesel engine in there. <laughs> no battery. <laughs> but Jurgen can't start the engine. But he, you like, know. he must have carried it by himself, you know, back to the boat somehow. I, mean, I, mean, I, don't, even, I don't He didn't explain to us now, how he did that. <laughs> here is the incredible thing, and this is a, this story used to be really fun to tell, but now the latest things make it less fun to tell. But I'll like, try and ignore the reality of what's just happened and tell the story as I remember it. Um, at this point, he goes to the... Human nature is incredible, but he... Anyway, at this point, he goes to a payphone, dials the payphone, says the macro fries at dawn. I'm sending a pickup truck with a rug. And Sabina flies into Ethiopia, Ethiopia, takes a taxi cab to somewhere in, the, you know, some specified place. They come up with a rug lay the rug on the ground, she crawls underneath the fence, lays on the rug, they roll up the rug, they throw the rug in the back of the pickup truck, and they bring her to Rockall. But she can't show herself, so he can't start the diesel, except in the night. He can only test her on the engine at night. He has no transmission. So he's, he's stole a bunch of pulleys and got like fan belts and shit, you know? And uh, she's down there cooking food, and um, they decide that if they just go out of the harbor, the pirates will just take them again. So they have to go out of the harbor in the worst possible weather. So he's waiting for the really bad weather, and they get this gale that's coming, and it's like 45 things, and they're going to go. And the sun sets. He's going to leave at midnight. The sun sets. The wind's increasing. He's started the diesel. It's running. All the belts are running. He's now he's smuggling the sails up on deck, you know. Doesn't want anyone to see him. And it's 10 o'clock, and now the wind's gusting over 40, and, you know, it's going to be great. And um, the boat's surging, and you know, this is going to be a great storm. And a big gust of wind hits the boat, really pulls on the um, antenna, and pulls the antenna tower down on rock Pull the antenna tower And I mean, it just falls above, you know, breaks the bowl, rips up the thing, <laughs> takes the chain plate, puts two holes in the boat, and the whole boat is stuck under this. <laughs> Antenna. Antenna. You know, it's just <laughs> unbelievable. And now, now Rock Jurgen could have taken the, you know, he's a, Jurgen was a very stubborn man, and he was very angry, needless to say. And so his attitude was, you know, to, you know, to come out on deck and uh, in the morning, um, when they were, you know, there and, you know, want demand money because they've damaged the boat to the <laughs> using a lot of the N words, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So instead of working this out, uh, they were so angry at him, and he was so angry at them, that they just took a bulldozer and pulled the, um, 
the tower, which was laying on his boat, you know, just pulled it off of him, but, you know, they could have picked it up. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, we see that he, they eventually sail out of there. I mean, they, they accomplish their goal. When I see the boat, I've never seen a boat like that. I mean, I thought it was hit by a small nuclear they weapon or something. Like That's crazy. And I, I mean, I rushed over and said, what happened? You know, are you okay? What happened? Did you get, what hit you? I mean, it looked like an explosion It hit it. It was all rusty. And uh, they explained the story. And I was on my way to give a talk to the Lankawi Yacht Club. Um, and when I, I was so blown away that, you know, when I got to the Yacht Club, I figured, forget my boring born on schooner story. And I told them all about Rockall, and we raised a, a bunch of money for him. I think, what did we raise? 230 bucks or uh, 300. something like that. Yeah. So I ran over the next morning and gave that to him. Um, and we became uh, Which was just the same amount as friends. the boom we was looking at. Yeah, <laughs> and there was some kind of yeah. And then I had all kinds of extras, because a guy had just died, and I had inherited a bunch of his tools. So I gave him, he had nothing, nothing. So I gave him, you know, yeah, all kinds of stuff. Anyway, stuff, yeah. and, uh, you know, we got together, and Sabina, was still, you know, um, very depressed, very depressed, and saying, you know, people are animals, the world's no good, and stuff. But he was recovered. Um, and for us to find out, like, literally ten days ago, that they had, of course, we just heard that Rockall had been seized by pirates, and then we heard that Sabina. So where in the Philippines? So then in Mindanao, in the been, southern Philippines, it where must the have been like Zamboanga and the Sulu yeah. or something. Yeah, but, uh, and they were on the same boat. Yeah. Same boat. So when did the first incident so happen? How long ago was that? Twenty oh nine. Must have been oh nine. Must have been oh nine. Yeah. Oh oh eight or oh nine, somewhere in there. And um, so, what an incredible story! And you know, you can look at the story uh, all different ways. You know, I mean, some people react, you know, to our, I, I think of it as a great life story. I mean, think of the love that they had for each other, um, and a story of tremendous perseverance, a tremendous tenacity, tremendous. Um, he didn't let these people beat him. You know what I mean? It's just unbelievable. Yeah, to, to, to go back like that. To go back, isn't The balls, it? like... Yeah. And then she went. <laughs> yeah. For her to go. I mean, Man. Uh, I don't know what I... I mean, I... And now he's in captivity and she's dead. But I believe that what happened there at the end is, you know, she she realized, you know, I'm going to, you know... These uh, guys are coming. These guys are coming. They're going to do it again and just go up there and, you know, bang, bang, bang. And, she you had know, gun, they had guns on board at that point. Yeah. yeah. Put your yeah. Cassidy in the sun desk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. So story. what an incredible And then story. him as well, he <laughs> yeah. he was murdered as well. No. Yeah. Uh, no, no, he's, no, he's, he's alive. He's, a he's prisoner in captivity. Right he's in captivity oh, yeah, right okay. now. And uh, so I wrote this story up for, you know, and this is my, you know, I don't know, it's kind of weird. You, you, you meet these people. Your friend, huh? Yeah, so you're writing about your friend and, uh, you know. Um, well, it had a happy ending before. It had a happy ending before. So I wrote the story up and, you know, I've sold it a number of times. Um, but that allowed him to come to the attention of, um, you know, all the TV people, Hollywood, you know. Um, anyway, a bunch of people, you know, they did films of him and bought cereal. You know, so he got a bunch of money, not out of me, but, you know, as a, uh, the way I think of it is, you know, as a direct result of me giving him all this publicity. Or, anyway, that's how it worked out. Yeah. Um, and uh, But he was a very, uh, you know, he's a stubborn guy, to put it mildly. Yeah, um, and... Um, very amazing, but it shows the tremendous tenacity that people have and the attraction to this lifestyle. I'm always amazed that people, you know, we were in, had the boat in Annapolis, and they have these boats, you know, cruising boats, and they they come down for the weekend. It was so much trouble to fight the traffic and carry all the coolers, and you know, they only go out for like three hours, and yet these people are spending all that money, and they want to be you and I, you know what I mean? And they are willing to work so hard, spend so much money for that dream. And I just want the people that dream that hard, that work that hard, to get the opportunity to experience what we do every day yeah, of our lives. Yeah, that's pretty well said. Yeah. You can read more on Cap'n Fatty at fattygoodlander.com or do an author search on Goodlander. And that's F-A-double-T-T-Y, not fat with a P-H.